Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin. In today's video, I'm gonna finally get to start to work on my bathroom in my shop. Now, I'm presented with two different problems. Uh, one that we're gonna focus on today, another one that we'll focus on in a different video. But the first one that we'll do in a different video is the water. We don't have any water ran to this building, so we have to get water ran from the curb to the building. And then my problem that we're gonna be focusing on uh, today is we don't have any plumbing or proper plumbing that's in place for this bathroom. And we got five inches of concrete that we have to remove. And let me show you what's going on here and how the layout's gonna happen. First, these pipes cannot be used because they were installed incorrectly. This goes into a T and that should go into a Y. So it goes straight down. And if we have waste going into that, it's just gonna spread out like this. Um, it could flow, but it needs to be properly done with a Y. So when the waste goes down, it kind of flows out. So let me explain what's happening. We're gonna have a vanity here, and this is in the wrong spot. So the center of our vanity is right in this area right here. And then we're gonna come over and the center of the toilet will be right here, so that won't work anyway. And then we're gonna put a sewer basin in right here because the grade of our building versus our septic tank, we have to have one of those. And then we're gonna have a uh, shower here and I'm gonna build out a spot here and have and a hot water heater right here. This will be in later videos, you'll be able to see this completely finished. But today we're gonna to focus on uh, sawing out the concrete where you see my lines here and then chiseling out the rest of it. And I'm gonna show you the tools I'm gonna to use to do that. So here's the thing, I don't do this work every day, so I don't need to go buy a $2,500 uh, gasoline saw that's gonna be inside of a building or a real expensive concrete saw that I'm gonna use one time. And that's where I love these Vivar tools is that I can purchase these for a reasonable cost and do work myself and save money. So here I have a small jackhammer and here I'm gonna have a 16 inch concrete saw so I can go through that uh, five inches of concrete. And I'll do a quick unboxing of the jackhammer. You'll get gloves, a mask that I'll definitely need, uh, the manual, a wrench, some safety glasses, some grease, some extra parts for the bushings of the motor, uh, the actual jackhammer itself, which I wanted to use a smaller jackhammer that was manageable. See, I could hold that out with one hand with no problem. And that this is maneuverable in that small space. Also, you'll get two bits. You'll get the flathead bit and the point. But before we start using the jackhammer, I'm gonna use this concrete saw. And this is the 16 inch concrete saw because I need to go through that five inches of concrete. So let's get this pulled out of here. This one's a little bit heavier than the other one, but, and they got it turned upside down or I'll open the box upside down. Let's pull this out, take a look at that. And I wanted tools that I could manage without breaking my back for one, because I'm gonna be doing this by myself. So I wanted to make sure that we didn't have no fumes in here. So I went with all electric. I think this is gonna be perfect because this is actually a wet uh, concrete saw. It allows me to keep the dust down as well. And with the saw, you'll get the hose for connecting the water. You'll get the pump for connecting the water. A guide that will help you keep straight lines. And of course, you're gonna need a saw blade and that's included as well, 16 inch diamond saw blade. And to install the guide, all you need to do is take these off here, kind of over that and you wanna align the hose up. Then you'll grab the bolt and the nut that was provided. Now you'll grab a half inch wrench or a 13 millimeter and a number six Allen wrench. This is to make this function, and then this is to tighten this and set this in place for your depth of cut. So now when you tighten that down, the depth of cut can be changed here. So that's really deep. That would be more shallow. Next, we need to install the blade. And to do that, you wanna remove this bolt. This is reverse thread bolt as well. So to loosen, this is actually gonna turn off the direction that you're used to and the Titan is gonna to be to your left. 
rather than to your right. Now you'll want to pull this off. You leave that back one on and you'll get your blade up in there here like this. Okay. Hopefully that'll fit for what I'm trying to do right now. All right, there's a little spot that this needs to go up in to let it set flush in there to tighten down. You can kind of see that it's not on the boat now. It's on this little flange. And then on this side here, we'll turn this one like this. And now when that tightens down, it holds that saw blade in position. And screw this back on. Next, you'll need to grab a 16 millimeter socket or a wrench. And if you look over on this side here, you'll see a button. So you'll press this button down. You'll rotate this blade right here until you can press this button down. And that's gonna look something like this. So you press down and rotate. And you see how it fell into the spot? Then you'll grab your socket. And get it kind of snug. And you'll also want to be aware that this blade needs to rotate in the direction of that arrow right there. So this saw rotates like this, so the arrow is turning correctly. Setting up the jack hammer, it's as simple as pushing this down and installing the bit. To get this fully hooked up, all you do is take the hose, push it up onto your shutoff valve and onto the pump. So now I need to go grab me a five gallon bucket, fill it up with water, and then throw this down in that water to make sure that this valve's turned on and see if everything is working correctly and start sawing that floor. Now we need to flip it on, turn our water valve on, and the water's flowing. And now that I got my gear on, it's time to cut. Now that I've got this cleaned up a little bit and all of my lines cut, I'll bring in the jackhammer and I'll knock out this section here and all down this line and that section there. And then I'll work on chipping out what I need right here and it's close to that wall uh, that I need. But I had to clean it up because you wouldn't be able to see anything. But now I'm gonna put a fan in here, get this dried out, and then I'll come back and start the jackhammering. Now that the floor is dried up pretty good, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the jackhammering. And my final thoughts on the 16 inch concrete saw is that it could certainly get this job done. If you were doing massive jobs, then no, I would not recommend that because it's just not big enough for that. And it overheats a breaker if you push it too hard. But if you're a DIYer, I would certainly recommend it. It's gonna save you a lot of money and you're gonna be able to get the job done. I cut through five inches of concrete. This is 5,000 PSI uh, concrete. It is very, very tough, but that's all cut through it and I use the water function 
because I just didn't want so much dust in here. Although it still creates a little bit of dust, it doesn't create near what it would if you didn't have that water function. And for the jock hammer, I like that size because it's maneuverable. I could set down and take care of little sections at a time. But if you were doing a massive section, I would recommend a larger jack hammer. But for what I was doing here, it was perfect for uh, taking care of this job and it worked fairly well. I use mostly the flat bit, uh, the pointed bit. I didn't need it in this scenario. I thought I was going to use it a little bit more than what I did, but the flat bit was working great. So that's what I use. So my final recommendation on these VVAR tools are that I would certainly recommend them if you are a DIYer.